Okay, somebody was asking about the rototiller. Well, what this is, is a toy built Bronco. I've had this for a lot of years. But this originally came with a Briggs and Stratton motor on it. And there again, you're dealing with an aluminum cylinder. Um, you know, they're kind of a disposable motor. So that Briggs went to hell. And so I replaced it with this Honda motor, GX200. Now, that is a terrific motor, and it's a direct replacement. And the thing, <laughs> you know, runs cheap. Uh, all of it starts, you know, actually, it, Honda makes a hell of a motor. And this is the industrial type, you know. I mean, you can get the lower grade, but that was a great improvement. Uh, much better than that Briggs was. They just, you know, Honda does make a really good motor. But I do, the thing I like about these, they are a shaft drive with a worm gear. You know, there's, there's belts under this housing to get your forward and reverse, but the final drive is a worm. Uh, that works very, very well. Uh, it's not as fancy as some, you know, like some have the counter rotating tines and stuff, but for what I do, I, I really am happy with this. Uh, so much better than the front tine tillers, you know, those old front tine ones were a wrestling match. This thing just cruises along so quietly and smoothly. Um, the one thing, you know, there's like this lever on the back here is a height adjustment, and there's a kind of a foot that drags, you know, that sets your height. There you can see cord from the other garden. Uh, if you're trying to break up like grass, you know, or sod, you got to work at it slow. You got to go shallow and just keep gradually going deeper, or these things will launch. You know, it'll just leap out of your hands. <laughs> the good thing is, I mean, you're controlling it with the, the thing there, and if it pulls out of your hands, it'll stop. But for this regular killing, like I do in the garden now, it's great because I can set it real shallow, you know, just to, to trim these little weeds up. Uh, it doesn't do a lot of throwing dirt around. So actually, it's a pretty good tiller. Um, I don't think it was that expensive when I bought it, but that was years ago. But like I say, that had the Briggs motor on and the Honda is great. Great improvement over that Briggs. Think very highly of that Honda motor. Just much cheaper running, much quieter, just smooth. Uh, it's hard to beat that. And I think I got that motor. They had it in stock at Northern Tool. You know, because I think it's a very common motor uh, used in a lot of small equipment. But oof, it's hard to beat that. Made a hell of an improvement on that tiller. But I could see where, you know, everybody, uh, you should, uh, you know, buy a Harbor Freight motor. Oh, man, I just, I, I don't need the aggravation. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, it, the thing about the Chinese stuff, they've got the metallurgy down. You don't have the problems with, like, crankshaft wearing or, you know, piston wear. They've got that down, but everything that bolts onto the motor is going to break or fly off. You know, they got cheap carburetors, uh, crappy fuel, plastic fuel tanks that always break. They're like this, this Honda when you've got a good solid metal. You know, they're just a very well-built motor. Uh, and what was it, maybe like a hundred bucks more than one of the Harbor Freight ones would have been, but poof, I, I don't want to have to fiddle with one of them. You know, they're, you know, they're not designed to be fiddled with. If, if they break down, you just replace them. I don't like that. I, I like something that can be rebuilt, and these Honda ones have got a cast iron 
cylinder liner, so they are rebuildable. That Briggs wasn't that way. 